Hey guys, welcome back to Insomniac Stream. To get these horns started, I am using pink insulation foam. This is the one and a half inch thickness, but they do come in different sizes depending on what kind of horns you're creating. All I did first was sketch out the shape and size of the horns that I wanted and made sure to mimic it so that I would have two symmetrical horn bases to work from. Then using an X-Acto knife, I separated the pieces and started carving down the edges with the shape I had drawn on. Again, of course, guys, if this is something you are unfamiliar with, please be as safe as possible when using an X-Acto knife. These blades are incredibly sharp. I have used this method for years, so I may look relaxed with the knife, but I've also had more than my fair share of life learning cuts from these things. So just please be careful or have someone else who can help you. The template I originally cut out was useful here because once I had shaved down the one side that had the sketch on it, I was able to flip the foam over and resketch it on the other side. This just helps it that when you start carving down, you have a less likely chance of going diagonally or off track, and it'll be much easier to get that spherical shape of the horn. Something else you'll see me do is do these little triangular cutouts on the parts that are curved inwards, since those areas are harder to carve than the outside edges. And once I reach a point where I like my base, I just start carving in using the X-Acto knife as a carving blade, very similar to like peeling potatoes or vegetables, and that's kind of how I think of it, but I take little shavings off at a time, making sure to be careful of, of course, your hands, but also just to make sure you don't apply too much pressure because this is still pretty brittle foam and you could easily snap it and ruin all of your hard work. So just go slow and take your time. When you get to a point where you're pretty happy with the shape, you can go ahead and take some sandpaper as well as using a dust mask, cause safety first, and just go ahead along all the edges and sand them down. This kind of foam does really well with sanding. You can get it incredibly smooth. And as you do this, you'll probably learn areas where you may want to do a little bit further carving or refine, but this will help reveal those areas to you a little bit more. And you can actually see on mine in some of those curved edges near the top, there are little gouges in the foam. That's because I was too rough with the X-Acto knife. So definitely be careful when working with that. I wanted these horns to lean back a bit. So to do that, I had to figure out what angle I wanted them at and trim off the ends diagonally to make sure that they would sit backwards as well as make sure that they're pretty even and the same size at this point. And then to create the template for the foam scaling that I'm going to add on top, I went ahead and covered them entirely with masking tape, trying to overlap all of the layers so that when you take it off later, it all comes out as one piece. I sketched on the shape of the scales that I wanted with a Sharpie, also marking my front and back line just to help me out later. And then I made sure to number all of them so that you know what order they go in towards the top. And then what you can do is take your X-Acto knife and do a slight cut up the back side. This will cut a little bit into the foam, but because we're going over with the craft foam, it won't be an issue. And then you just want to take it off and individually cut out all of the little scales. And then for the scalings, I am just using two millimeter foam. This is craft foam and you can find it at just about any art store. This one is actually from a pack from the dollar store. So super cheap. And then what you want to do is trace out all of your patterns, but you also want to add a little bit of extra length to each one because they are going to overlap and you need to make sure that they have enough extra length on them to do. You can see by the end of this, I had a fun array of colors because of my dollar store pack, but you could go for the exact color you need if that is going to be your base. Once you have all of your scales cut out, you want to start from the top to the bottom. That way they can layer over top of each other. So the very first one is probably the trickiest, but that would be the very top of the horns. And all I did was put down a little bit of hot glue on the back. Again, don't use too much hot glue here because the hot glue can melt the insulation foam. You just want to put enough that you can lay down the craft foam and have it stick. Once you get that first one down, it's just a layering game. You can see I was just pointing to the fact that I left a little bit of extra room on the edges as well. This just because with the overlaying of each other, they might get a little bit fatter as you go down and having that extra room on the craft foam is, you know, better safe than sorry kind of method. And you can always trim them off as you go down. In the end, you will have two fully scaled horns. And if you do not have access or the funds for thermoplastics, you can simply seal the horns here with white or wood glue and then paint them that way. You might want to refine the back seam a little bit, but this will totally work. I am doing the same as my dragon horns and I will be covering mine with Warbla. Warbla is a thermoplastic with a shiny adhesive side and a little bit of a rougher texture, which is considered the outside. This is a plastic that you can heat up with a heat gun as I am doing here, and it will become soft and moldable and you can use it to wrap across different things to make very strong, sturdy props. What I did for the horns was sandwich it between two big pieces that I'd cut out, then just press them together and cut off the edges. 
You want to make sure that the heat gun does not touch the actual craft horn that you've created because again, the whole issue of melting foam, but you can always use the heat gun over any of the warbler and it will be fine. It will just make it more pliable. I then used a cake modeling tool to just press in along all of those ridges that we had created with the scaling since on their own, they don't really show up. So again, just make sure the warbler is warm for this and just press it in all the way around. And then you will get left with a bit of a seam line. So once you let the warbler completely cool and harden, you can go in with a Dremel and clean up all of those protruding lines that have been left behind. And it's like magic. Okay, and from here you want to seal the warbler. You do not have to do this step. It is something I learned from Can We Cosplay, but that is to take a little bit of wood glue and just go over the warbler entirely. I do about two to three coats. And this is just to get rid of the gritty texture that the warbler has and makes it smooth. Give them both lots of time to dry and then go ahead and base out your horns. For mine, I want to do a base coat of black. So I just took some spray paint and in a well ventilated area or with a respirator, you want to make sure to cover the entire horns with the spray paints. And then for the attachment method for this, I'm using rare earth magnets and they are incredibly powerful magnets. They're the kind you are going to need if you want to do this method for them to be able to actually magnetize through a wig. The ones I had were the five pound strength magnets. I actually probably would have gone up one just because the wig I ended up using was thicker than I anticipated. But all I did was use a little bit of warbler to attach them to the base. And then this is the part where my camera sadly fizzled out. But all I did for the structure that goes underneath the wig is create a pattern, cut it out in foam and cover it in warbler. And then I attached rings and elastic so that it will sit on your head like an elastic band. And this will be what allows support for your horns to be magnetized on top. When attaching the magnets to the headband, you need to make sure that they match up properly to the ones on your horns. So all I did was take a Sharpie and mark which one was the front and back. You just want to make sure that they are magnetized the correct way so that they do not repel each other, but actually stick. If you were doing this with just craft foam, I believe it would still work, but you may just have a little bit more wear and tear because the foam might be more susceptible to tearing from the strength of these magnets. So you may have to resort more to gluing the craft foam ones to a headband as opposed to the magnetized route. And then I quickly tested their strength and made sure to do it with a wig as well so that they would actually stick. And now that the complicated part is done, it's time for the fun part, which is painting. And of course, this is going to be the same paint job as both my dragon warrior makeup and the dragon ears because I wanted them all to match. So all I am using is a duochrome pigment from Sugar Pill and a purple blue tone pigment from Inglot. I'm laying down a layer of clear glue first and then just patting these pigments on top to make sure I get that kind of iridescent sheen to the horns. I kept the teal color to the edges of all of the scaling and then blended it down into the purple as well as fading it off into black. If I went overboard at all, I went ahead and added the black acrylic paint back in just to make sure that there really was definition around all of the scaling and that they would stand out. It is easy for the pigments and the shine to dominate. So you can see it becomes very muddy when that happens, which is why I went ahead and went back in with the black every time to make sure it was really faded out, but also had definition. Once that was done, I went ahead and sealed everything with a coat of crystal clear spray paint. This just helps secure those pigments and give a glossier finish to the horns. One last detail I did choose to add to both my ears and my horns was to outline the very edges with a thin line of white acrylic paint. This again, because I just found that from far away, they weren't as legible and adding this thin line of white makes them far easier to read from a distance. And that is it for my magnetic dragon horn tutorial. This of course can be adapted to any type of horn or headdress you might need to create. So hopefully this can help some of you in your own projects. Thank you again for being so patient with this one. I'm excited to get back to filming some new looks for you and I still have the time props to edit. But thank you as always so much for watching. I of course will see you next video. So until then, bye guys.